Okay, great. So again, good morning and thank you for joining us for this session in our Enabling Canadian Innovation Virtual Conference. We're joined today by Felicia Gowing, our Director of Business Development, and Kirsten Waters, D Digital Manufacturing Te Technical Manager here at CADMicro. Before we get things started, there are a couple of quick housekeeping items to mention. This is session one of 14 taking place this week as part of our virtual launch. If you haven't already done so, you can register for any of the remaining breakout sessions by visiting our website, www.cadmicro.com and checking out our online calendar. So without further ado, I'll pass things over to Felicia to get us started. Thank you, Sarah. There we go. Uh, so thank you for those of you who are joining us today. Uh, as Sarah mentioned in the past, these launches have been held live. Of course, this year with COVID-19, that's just not possible. So before we begin, I just wanted to start by saying on behalf of the entire team here at Cab Micro, we're so thankful and proud of all of our customers who, in the face of this unprecedented pandemic, have pivoted their businesses to step up and help. I've seen so many of our customers lending their resources towards this cause, uh, from retooling their routers to cut safety glass, so that way frontline workers are protected as they continue to work at grocery stores and pharmacies so that we, we could continue to access food and medication for our families. Uh, some are manufacturing foot operated door openers, reducing the need to touch door handles for office buildings and other businesses where automatic doors are just too costly or not an option. Additive technology is also being used in a big way. Uh, we've seen customers 3D printing medical supplies like ventilators and face masks, uh, and others have introduced new lines to manufacturing for medical grade protective masks for our frontline medical workers. Um, we've also shifted at CAD Micro to support all of these customers in new ways of working. Um, we acted fast, we listened to customers, and we became even more flexible by shifting to invest in digital infrastructure for things like training, certification, and technical support. So as we navigate through these sort of uncharted waters, uh, our commitment is to continue to build and support technologies that are relevant to this sort of new normal. Um, so today we're gonna take a look at some of the new feature enhancements in the latest release of Celebrix CAM and CAMWorks. Uh, then we're gonna take a first look at Dalmia's manufacturing rules that are powered by the 3D Experience platform and also take a quick introductory look into a remote uh, communication and machine monitoring solution that uh, CAD Micro Solutions is now a supplier of called Simco. So SolidWorks CAM is powered by CAMWorks and it's a big part of that SolidWorks digital manufacturing ecosystem. It allows users to integrate design and manufacturing processes all in one system and that avoids that downstream delay and rework. SolidWorks CAM standard is what's included with every license of SolidWorks that's on current subscription. And SolidWorks CAM professional can be added for assembly machining, indexing, volume mill, and turning. So let's get into what's new. SolidWorks CAM 2021 gives you more automation with extended stock options, along with flexibility to change coordinate systems based on new stock types. Predefined sizes are stored in your tech BD for automatic selection of your most commonly used stock. And previously found in turning, a cylindrical stock option is now also available in stock options for milling. Uh, this easily determines the minimum bounding cylindrical stock required for your parts. New prompt for rebuild. So previously in turning and mill turn, when a stock option is modified, a prompt for rebuild was presented. And now in 2021, this is now available for milling as well. So this adds uh, the ability to see what options and features or operations and features are updated when you modify your stock. Uh, so now you no longer have to manually update all of these toolpaths. Also new in 2021 are enhanced drilling operations. Uh, so now you can define PET parameters as a percentage of the flute length or diameter, which gives you more control over point-to-point -point operations like drilling that lets you capture that best practices uh, more robustly. 
Um, and if you share your posts between programmers, um, now there's no need to be hunting around in your C drive. Uh, the new setting in the tech BD has an option that allows you to select a default post folder. So this is pretty handy when your folder location moves. Um, so at this point, I'm going to hand it over to uh, Kristen Waters, who is going to take us uh, inside SolidWorks CAM to take a look at some of these new features. Awesome. Thank you, Felicia. And thanks everyone for joining us today. So 2021 is coming at us quickly. Uh, as CAM programmers, we have some great new enhancements to SOLIDWORKS CAM and CAMWORKS that we can look forward to. Um, and I think as human beings, we can collectively agree that the year 2020 has been a bit of a dumpster fire. Um, so I'm really looking forward to the new year, uh, getting back to better health and getting back to business. So hopefully you guys can see the sensor mounting bracket that I have on my screen. Um, we're going to go ahead and create a CAM program in SOLIDWORKS CAM, and I'm going to show you some of the enhancements along the way. So I'll make sure that I have my mill machine set. And next, I'm going to double click to open up my stock manager. So as Felicia mentioned, we do have some new stock options, uh, stock types available for 2021. Uh, let's focus on this second one, which is our predefined bounding box. So this bounding box is linked to, the different types of bounding boxes are linked to our material type. So when we see the stock size here, uh, this dropdown is gonna show us all of the stock that we have saved for the particular type of material, in this case, aluminum alloy. Now I can choose as I need to from the dropdown, um, but I can also create a new size on the fly. So let's go ahead and update some of these parameters. I'll keep that at seven by seven inches and three eighths thick. Now, when I go to save to tech DB, uh, I'm given the option, do I wanna create a new stock or do I wanna overwrite the existing stock that I just chose? So let's go ahead and create that new stock. And we have the ability to assign an ID as well. Um, also, we could set as default if we wanted to. So I'll go ahead and press okay. And uh, now that stock is set as my stock for this part and it's saved back to my technology database. Now, if I scroll down a little bit further, I have the ability to set my locations specifically based on X, Y, and Z. So for my X and Y reference, I can set from, I can set center, uh, offset from left uh, and offset from right. Now, if I needed to, I could add an additional offset using my scroll wheel or I could simply type in a value as I needed to. When it comes to our Z reference, we have the ability to offset from top and offset from bottom. So I'll keep that offset from bottom for now. And we're gonna go ahead and add a facing operation to this part. So I'll click okay. Before we uh, generate automatic feature recognition, I'll just set my coordinate system to my middle stock bounding box vertex as shown. Uh, all my axes look good, so I can go ahead and press OK. And now we're going to uh, extract machinable features. So we're going to um, initiate AFR, automatic feature recognition. Um, before I do that, actually, I want to just make sure that I have my mill option set uh, to find that face feature. And let's go ahead and find our part perimeter feature as well. So now SOLIDWORKS CAM is uh, analyzing our solid model. It's gonna find all of those features and it's going to show us in brackets the default strategies that are going to be applied to those features. Let's go ahead and drag our perimeter boss all the way to the bottom because I want that to generate last. Next, we're gonna generate our operation plans. This is gonna turn those strategies into a set of tool paths. And lastly, we'll generate the tool paths. Uh, so, you know what, I decided I don't actually want to use that bar stock. I want to jump back into my stock manager and I want to check out another option available new to 2021. Uh, so as Felicia mentioned, we also have a cylindrical bounding box that we can choose from. So let's go ahead and set that type. And if we scroll down a little bit, we see the minimum bounding parameters. So our width, our thickness, and we can increase those offsets as, as needed. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add a little bit of material to my overall diameter and to my top of stock. 
and I do have the um, the option to choose the coordinate system that's defined for the cylindrical stock. So do I want to use my SOLIDWORKS part origin? Do I want to use a fixture coordinate system? Or uh, I also have the ability to set as centroid. So it's going to find the very middle of that cylinder. So I'll go ahead and press OK. And now we see that warning box pop up that, as Felicia mentioned, is new to 2021. So here I can see that my coordinate system has changed, my mill part setups, a couple of my features, and 28 of my operations need to be regenerated for my stock modification. So I can choose to not have this dialog show up, but I'm going to keep this active because I think it's a great feature. And when I go ahead and press OK, I, all of those toolpaths are going to be regenerated automatically for me. So we're back in our SOLIDWORKS CAM operations tree. And let's go ahead and open up one of those drill toolpaths to check out some enhancements to our pecking cycle. So if I navigate in my operation parameters over to my drill hole parameters, I can see here new to 2021 for pecking, high speed pecking and variable pecking. I not only can add in a sub peck amount, but I do have that option to input a percentage of tool diameter or a percentage of flute length. This is a really great enhancement, and I think that when it comes to depth inputs in SOLIDWORKS CAM and CAMWORKS, we can expect to see going forward more of this option to select a percentage of our flute length. Uh, now back to Felicia, so she can highlight some new enhancements that are coming to CAMWORKS 2021. Thanks, guys. Perfect. Thanks, Kristen. So if we jump over to the CAMWORKS side, this opens up the ability for uh, three to five axis machining, uh, milling, turning, wire EDM, nesting, and virtual machining. Again, this is all fully integrated into your SOLIDWORKS. Um, so let's take a look at some of the enhancements in turning, milling, probing, and shop floor. So new in 2021, CAMWORKS um, has added the ability for B-axis uh, contouring and turning, uh, which is suited for more problematic geometry parts. And this really avoids that complex reconfigurations and uh, the need for special tooling as well. So Kristen's gonna walk us through a bit more of that. Um, if we look at some of the enhancements in the uh, automatic spindle direction based on hand of cut, as you can see in the image shown, um, based on the hand of cut feed direction, that the spindle direction is almost fixed. In CAMWORKS, these are two separate inputs. Um, so what happens is users can input these um, as mistakes. In 2021, you can now specify what is clockwise and counterclockwise, and you can define the spindle rotation direction in the tech DB and in the application. And spindle direction can now be corrected optionally. Uh, this is also available in SOLIDWORKS CAM. In 2021, there's been a number of new probing parameters added um, that Kristen will walk us through, uh, but probing is now supported in mill turns. So for all cycles that are supported in mill uh, can now be defined in mill turn, um, only for mill setups. Uh, users also can have the ability to uh, automatically select standard probing cycles based on uh, face and feature selection. And a new dynamic display of probing tool paths allow you to avoid uh, collisions and broken probes. Uh, new in 2021, uh, shop floor includes the ability to share and view additional documents. Um, so as requested by users, you can now create references to one or more files, and you can keep all of your CAD and CAM data and associated documents in a single file um, from tool lists, inspection reports, even shipping labels. And the files are associative and trackable, so you can avoid manufacturing uh, obsolete revisions. Uh, also available, the powerful uh, technology database or TechBD applies default machining methodologies that are based on your preferences. So being able to save back uh, your tool selections, uh, machining strategies, as well as feeds and speeds back to the database allows SOLIDWORKS CAM to be smarter when applying tool paths in the future. Uh, so the more you save back, 
uh, the more time you save and the less work you have to do when you run across the same and similar in the future. Uh, but now in 2021 is the ability to import and export tools using Excel files. Um, so existing tool data can now be modified, new tools can be added, uh, as well as mass updates to the tool data along with importing of tool catalogs. So this will save uh, quite a bit of time. Um, so from there, I'll pass this over to Kirsten to take a uh, deeper look into some of these features in CamWorks live in the environment. Awesome. Thanks, Felicia. Uh, so we've jumped into CamWorks 2021, and you can see I've got a turn part on my screen. Um, from the left-hand side, I have selected my turn single turret, and I am going to just jump into my stock manager really quick, and I'll add some stock offset. The next part of my programming is going to be extracting the machinable features on this part. So we've generated our turn setup one, and um, we have a bunch of features. Let's go ahead and generate the operation plan for those features. And in true CamWorks style, we'll go ahead and generate the tool paths. So as Felicia mentioned, we have this really awesome update, which is our continuous B axis turning. This is available in our turn finish tool paths currently. Uh, so let's jump into one of those tool paths and see how it works. So this functionality is gonna work for tool orientations that are coming from down left or down right. So currently we can use this in our OD profiles inside of our turn finish tool path. So if we check out this part right now as it's programmed, um, we can see the green line represents our actual OD pro profile. Um, and this orange line here represents the areas of that profile that our tool was able to cut based on the current uh, lead, angle access, lead angle of our tool. So we are limited and there's these areas of undercut that we can't quite access. Um, so that would involve uh, multiple setups or uh, multiple segments of turn finish operations to be able to cut those areas. So if we hop over to our turn finish tab inside of our operation parameters, uh, we now have this option at the bottom to turn on continuous B axis. If we open up these B axis settings, uh, this is going to allow us to set the parameters in order to control the axis movement. So we have two different types. The first type is constant angle. So with constant angle, CamWorks is going to attempt to maintain that lead angle of our tool, and it's only going to tilt that tool when necessary in order to access those undercut areas. Um, we have the, the angle uh, being controlled by our incremental B axis or effective lead axis, uh, or lead angle rather, as defined inside of our tool. And of course, we can update that inside of these parameters if we need to. Um, and these two values are associative to each other. Uh, we can also further limit how our tool is able to tilt based on a min minimum and maximum angle. Uh, so this range is allowed all the way up from negative 180 degrees to positive 180 degrees. Um, and these are set as default back to the tech DB. So of course you can modify them and save them as you need to. We do have this holder clearance value we can set. And we also have the ability to choose how do we want to ma machine a sharp corner. So if we choose the smoothing option, uh, we have a smoothing distance and we have an angular resolution that we can control. Uh, of course, we could also choose to rotate at direction change in order to maintain those sharp corners. So let's go ahead and preview uh, the default parameters and see how this is going to affect our tool path. So as you can see, uh, now that we've turned on continuous B axis, we are able to cut a lot more of that OD profile. Let's do a step through to see it in action. So as you can see, that tool is only tilting when necessary in order to access the OD profile. If we jump back into our B-axis settings, let's select the second type, which is at an angle to the feature curve. So in this type, uh, CamWorks is going to tilt our tool along every single segment of our OD profile. 
and it's going to tilt that tool based on our effective lead angle. So the effective lead angle is calculated by the angle of the turn insert, which in this case is 55 degrees, and that number gets divided by two. We can update this as we need to on the fly. And once again, we have those minimum and maximum angles that we can set along with the holder clearance and the option to select how we want to approach sharp corners. So we'll press OK. We'll go ahead and we'll preview that toolpath. And we'll do a step through to see how that tool is going to tilt along every segment of the profile. Now we're going to save this part. And we're gonna jump into a second part so I can show you guys um, the, uh, sorry, I'm just trying to access. So I can show you guys the um, mill turn options um, and some new probing cycles. So as Felicia mentioned, we now have probing and Milturn, uh, but of course that's only for our Milturn setups. So here we've got a Milturn part. I've already set my machine type. Um, I've selected my stock and I've generated some turn setups and all of my features. So you can see here, I've got a couple turn setups and I've got a couple mill setups as well. So if we jump over into our operation tree, I'm going to focus on my mill part setup three, so we can see the orientation on my screen. And for this rectangular slot or pocket, we've got a roughing toolpath and we've got a contour toolpath. So let's go ahead and add a probing operation between those two. I'm gonna right click my rough mill and I'm gonna select a new probing operation. Gotta add a probing tool into my tool crib press OK, and my operation parameters are gonna pop up on the screen. So new to 2021, uh, we have some great enhancements for our three point bore and three point boss cycles. So let's go ahead and choose that three point bore. Um, and we have the ability to select individual cycle angles. So all three of those can be uh, uniquely modified. And this is gonna allow us to be able to probe partial bores, partial bosses, as long as fillets and arcs. So I'm gonna go ahead and select one of these fillets. And let's update these angles. So we'll do negative 20, negative 50, negative 80. And we can see here that we have those three angles that are gonna be able to capture that actual fillet. I'll press preview and we'll do a step through of the toolpath. I'll just uh, bring my speed down a bit and I'll press play. And we can see that in action. Uh, also new to 2021, we have this more parameters box. Uh, so if you're doing a lot of probing in your shop, you're definitely going to want to check this out. Uh, we've got a bunch of additional parameters and they can simply be turned on and off by uh, the check mark on the, the box on the left hand side. So we can, select, we can set an angular tolerance, um, we can set a feature dimension tolerance if we need to. And we also have this nice print option. So we can choose, do we want the output of these probing cycles to show up in our post process code or not? And as usual, if you need any further clarification, we've got those CAMWorks in context help menus that are going to explain further. Uh, back to Felicia. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much, Kristen. Uh, so as you've seen, SOLIDWORKS CAN in CAMWorks 2021 gives your manufacturing floor extended automation. Uh, with these great new enhancements that will save time, increase machining productivity. Um, so be sure to navigate to the customer portal to download the new version and explore how CAM can power your everyday milling and turning. Uh, as I mentioned, we wanted to take a quick first look at uh, Simcoe Edit uh, Professional. There we go. Um, so CAD Micro Solutions is now, uh, as of this year, an authorized supplier for Simcoe industry-leading computer-integrated uh, manufacturing solutions. 
There's uh, many options for the suite, uh, which includes advanced Simcoe edit, an NC program editor, DMC Max, which is a, a reliable and efficient CNC communication tool, and MDC Max for real-time machine monitoring and data collection. Um, so all of these uh, fit really nicely into that uh, digital manufacturing solution that allows us to work remotely. Um, so if any of this is of interest to you, or if you'd like to learn more about any of these tools, uh, give your uh, feel free to contact your sales rep, give us a call, um, and we'll be happy to chat more. Uh, so the last, uh, the last thing we're going to look at today is uh, the Dalmia. Um, so for those of you who are starting to explore cloud-based 3D experience ecosystem, you might be wondering how the platform can manage your manufacturing needs. Underneath the cloud of Dalmia, there are over a dozen different unique machining roles that your company can adapt uh, in order to meet your specific machining requirements. Uh, all the way from two and a half axis uh, prismatic machining up to more complex five axis machine kinematics, Dalmia offers a role that's right for your company. Um, also included are turning, mill turn, wire EDM and robotics programming capabilities. And each role contains numerous applications that allow you to manage your design from concept all the way through to manufacturing on the shop floor. Um, so without further ado, Kristen's gonna take us uh, inside the first look at this prismatic machining application. Excellent, thanks Felicia. So we're inside the Delmia prismatic machining app. Um, a lot of the apps on the platform are widgets and are browser-based, but the machining apps are actually desktop-based, so there is a uh, download and install process. Uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to import a native SolidWorks part that I have on my desktop, um, so we can go ahead and add some tool paths. Now my import dialog is going to pop up. Um, I can select the format of the part that I want to import, and then I can simply go and browse for that file. A couple things to note uh, between about fundamental differences between Dell Mia and other CAM solutions, uh, such as CAMWorks and SolidWorks CAM. So Dell Mia treats all of the different objects that you would need to machine a part, like your machine tool, your cutting tools, um, your actual part, your stock, any fixtures, et cetera. Delmia treats those all as individual objects, and those objects have a unique prefix assigned to them. Uh, so for example, a product is a PRD, a machine is an NCM, a cutting tool is an NCT, uh, and these prefixes are going to allow you to search for those objects inside your collaborative spaces on the cloud and really allow you to reuse those objects over as you need to. Another thing to note about Dalmia is, although you don't have this technology database that's running in the background with your stored strategies, you do have this really powerful capability to access reuse programming. So I can take parts that I've already programmed um, and I can have Delmia reuse the tool paths and then automatically update those tool paths and assign them to my new part. So fundamentally, there are some differences, but Delmia has uh, a lot of the same technology that's used in CAMWorks and SolidWorks CAM, and it, it's just a fantastic CAM solution with um, really great enhanced features. So we've got that part imported. I can see it on my screen. Um, we have this PPR context on the left as well. So your PPR context, you can look at that as your top level container where all of the objects that you need to program your part are going to be stored. Inside of that container, you can have multiple manufacturing cells. So that's the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add in a cell in order to program this particular part on a particular machine tool. Um, now, if this part needed to travel to more than one CNC machine, I could create multiple cells as I needed to. Uh, and of course, they would all get stored back to my PPR. So we have our new manufacturing cell. And I can see here that this prismatic machining wizard has popped up. It's going to gently guide me through all of the steps and all of the areas that I need to address in order to properly program and post out code for this particular part. 
So the first option is to import product. Now, because I've already imported that SolidWorks part, um, and because I could have multiple solid parts inside of the app at this time, I need to identify which one is my product that I want to machine. So I'm just going to jump over to my tab with my, uh, my mill to axis tab, and I'm going to select from the very top level my part that I want to machine. Um, so as you can see, um, sorry, one second. I just have my go to webinar control panel in my way. Um, so as you can see, if I go back to my prismatic machining wizard, I've got a green check beside product. Uh, so that tells me that step is complete and on to the next. Next would be resource configuration. So here is where I could mount a machine that I've already created and I could import resource resources such as fixtures, clamps, vices, tables. Um, I do have the option to select that reuse programming as I briefly spoke to, but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create a generic machine on the fly. So I'll click that generic machine button and this is a really similar to Camworks or SolidWorks Cam where I'm just gonna be creating a 3D representation of a machine tool. Um, from the top, I could select a generic three axis, a three axis with a rotary table, five axis or a mill turn machine. And of course, I have a bunch of different parameters that I can set and save for my particular machine. So I'm just gonna go ahead and press okay. We'll keep those defaults as is. And the next step is going to be to uh, create some rough stock. So my stock creation wizard pops up and here I have the ability to select an existing part um, or I could create a new part on the fly. So we just wanna select the manufacturing cell. So I'm gonna go ahead and <clears throat> I am going to select my manufacturing product. And then I'm gonna select my part body and I'm gonna choose this second option here to create a bounding box. So I have this bounding box uh, created around my part. If I needed to, I could update those X, Y, Z values. Um, I also have these neat little arrows that I can pull out. So uh, I can add additional stock uh, as I need to. So we'll go and press OK. And now we've got that stock created. In edit part operation, I'm going to go ahead and set up my mill part setup. So here, all of these salmon colors that you can see are interactive. So as I select one of those salmon colors, I can go ahead and select from my graphics area uh, the appropriate graphical input. I'm going to press, I'm going to double click or press escape uh, to get back to that part operation dialog. And next, I'm going to define my design, define my uh, design part. Sorry, I'm just gonna reset those selections. <clears throat> and I'm just gonna go quickly hide my stock so it's easier to select my part. And once again, I'll click design part and I'll select that body. If I wanted to adjust my coordinate system, I could do so from um, uh, right up here. And it's interactive, so if I want to select a different location to place that coordinate system, I can go ahead and do so from my graphical area. I can add in a work offset and I can rename that coordinate system as well. Uh, let's go ahead and set a safety plane. So I'll select my top of part and I've got this ability to hide show a ruler and I can simply drag up a value that I want to set that safety plane to. So with all of that defined, I could add additional setups, but uh, we just want that one mill part setup for now. So I'll go ahead and press OK. Now I've got three green checks. And uh, my next step is let's go ahead and create some tools. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to create an end mill. And I can just double click these values on the screen to update the parameters as I need to. So we'll set zero millimeters for our corner round and we'll update our shank diameter as well. 
You can also rename that tool. So 6.35 millimeter end mill. And let's go ahead and create a drill. Uh, so same fashion, I can just double click to update those values. And easily rename them as I need to. So I'm finished with my resource creation. I've got a check mark beside tools. And the next thing I want to do is I want to access Delmia's global feature recognition. So from the bottom of my screen, I'm going to select that uh, axial machining tab. And I can see here that I have access to local feature recognition, global. I can also create unique machining patterns as well. So we're going to select that global feature recognition. Uh, the first thing I want to do is select either a body or a face. So I'll select my body for my graphics area. And here I have options on what I want Delmia to, to find. Um, in advanced tab, I can select a specific machining direction I want it to adhere to when it runs that global feature recognition. Uh, the machining direction looks good, so if I needed to, I could click that arrow to reverse it. I can set a maximum diameter for my holes, so what's considered a hole versus a pocket. We also have numerous axial filters that we can set. Uh, so as you can ima imagine, if we had a lot of holes on this part, we could really kind of fine tune and control how we want Delmia to find and identify those holes. From my, P from my pattern tab, I'm gonna make sure that I have my create pattern for recognized holes checked. Um, and I wanna make sure that I have identical diameter and identical depth. So the next thing is to click apply and have that feature recognition technology analyzed on my part. So now we've got our results. Uh, I can see that it's found three holes. At the bottom here, we have one pattern created. Um, we also have some complex pockets and some complex steps. So I'll press OK and I'll close. Uh, and the next thing we're gonna do is, um, first we can expand our, our part and we can see all of those different features as they've been found. Um, but we also have the option now, let's go ahead and create some tool paths. So from my prismatic machining tab, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna select pocketing. Um, it's gonna ask me, where do I wanna create this tool path? So from my activities process tree, I'll just select my manufacturing program. Um, and I do have the ability as I create tool paths to control exactly where I want them placed in my list of tool paths. So uh, once again, you see that interactive area. So that's a theme across Delmia where you're really selecting what you want to define from the dialogue, and then you can jump over into your graphics area and select those uh, areas on your part. But in this case, we're gonna go and use that drop down feature menu because we've already found these features. So I'm just gonna pick prismatic Mach machining area five. And as I can see, everything turns green. Uh, I have a bunch of different options as well in here. I can select between a closed or open pocket. Um, I can choose between hard or soft boundaries. So do I want uh, open air edges? Um, I also have my offsets that I can select. Now you can see up at the top that we have these stop lights and when they appear green, that means that we have fulfilled the selection necessary to be able to go on to the next step. If I jump over to that first tab, I can check out my strategies for my actual toolpath. Uh, so I can choose my toolpath style. Um, I have my different machining parameters, radial, axial parameters. Um, a neat thing about Delmia is that I can add a finish pass right inside my roughing pass. So I don't have to create two separate toolpaths in that manner. Uh, let's go ahead and add a side finish at last level and bottom. And we can see here that we also have high speed machining tab. And if we needed to, we could turn on our polar coordinates. If we navigate over to this third tab, this is where we're gonna select our tool. So I'm gonna jump back into my resource configuration view and I'm gonna select that end mill. Uh, I get a preview of that below. And in my next, and I can see that it's turned green. So uh, we set the parameters.
my feed rate tab I'm going to leave as as is and this last tab here uh, is really neat it gives me the ability to select already predefined or create on the fly custom macros for my different approach and tracks so you can easily turn on a macro by just clicking it um, and from the bottom, as I said, you can build your own and you have all of these different options on how you want to build that macro uh, or you can select a predefined. So we're going to go ahead and select axial. We can update that value as we need to. And for my retract, I'm also going to select axial. I'll go ahead and press OK. Now I can see that pocketing toolpath appears underneath my tool change um, and I can press from the from the top to compute that toolpath. And if I click on it, I can see a graphical representation of it. Uh, let's add another pocketing toolpath in. We'll select the operation we want it to appear underneath. And once again, we're going to select that predefined feature. And this time, instead of uh, navigating through all the tabs, we're just going to select from the bottom this option to copy a toolpath. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy this toolpath from pocketing one. I'll press OK. I'll generate that toolpath. And now I can see it there on my screen. Uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to create a drilling operation. So we'll hop over to our axial machining. And from our drilling ops, we're going to select drilling with break chips. And from my pattern, I want to select my hole diameter. I can see here that three points have, I, have been identified, so it selected that pattern. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to jump over into my strategy parameters. I want to update my breakthrough amount. And inside of my tooling tab, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select that seven millimeter drill that we just created. Uh, once again, I have control over my feed rates um, and I also have control over my macro management as well. I'm going to jump back into my geometry tab and I'm going to update my jump distance. And I'll just press OK. Let's go ahead and compute that toolpath and check it out on the screen. And the last thing we're going to do is we're not going to program this entire part. I just wanted to give you guys a good preview of the programming capabilities. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's add in a contour profile. So the first thing we'll do is we'll select our top part. And next, I'm going to select the bottom of that feature. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to select one of my part edges. Uh, sorry, one second. I'm going to turn back on my stock for a second here. <clears throat> and I'm going to go ahead and select that profile. So I'll select one edge. And then I'm going to select my navigate belt of edges. And I'll go ahead and press OK. And as you can see, we have a few different options. So in mode, we can choose between two planes, between two curves, uh, curves and surfaces, and we can also choose between flank contouring as well. Um, so in my strategy, I'm just going to jump over here and I can select my toolpath style. I can also choose between my step over, my finishing, um, and again, I have my high speed machining and my polar mode if I need it. So this time, instead of selecting a tool that I just created, I'm going to go and search for one inside of my database on the platform. <clears throat> so this allows me to access my search command, and I can jump down to my content. 
so it's automatically filtered down to all of my cutting tools. Um, and I can go ahead and I can select one of those tools as I need to, and I can drag it into my program. Uh, lastly, I'll just make sure that I have my approach and retract turned on. Uh, and once again, I'll set those to axial. And I'll press OK. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select my manufacturing program. And from the top, I'm going to select to compute and simulate my tool paths. Uh, this is going to open up into my simulation manager um, and I do have the ability to turn on stock removal if I want to see that um, and I can also compare between my target part and my programmed part. So we'll just go ahead and press OK, uh, the press the play button and we can see those tool paths in motion. The last thing that we're going to do, so we'll exit our simulation. And we are going to create some code for this program. So we'll jump back into our prismatic machining wizard and we'll go ahead and we will generate our NC code. So I'm going to choose apt source as my file extension. And I'm going to go ahead and press execute. So now I can see that um, from my from my tree, I've got my code. It shows up as my manufacturing program one. Uh, so I can easily rename that if I need to. Um, and if I scroll down to my NC files container, I can choose to view that NC program. Uh, let's go ahead and view our app source. And there I have it. So I have my code on my screen um, and I can save that and I can export, share that to whoever I need to in my collaborative space. That brings me to the end of my first look at the Delmia Prismatic Machining app. So thank you guys so much for watching. So thank you so much, Christian, Kristen and Felicia, so sorry. Uh, we do have time for a Q&A. Um, so we have some questions in the queue already. As mentioned, we are giving away prizes for anyone who asks a question. Um, so if you do have one, feel free to jot it in and you could have a chance to win. Um, so the first question I have here is, does Delmia offer any free post processors? Uh, yeah, definitely. So Delmia is installed with a, a numerous generic post processors by default. Uh, these posts are available from three different partners. So we have IMS, we have ICAM, and we have Senate. Awesome, thank you. The next question is for Felicia. So do you do any of the CamWorks 2021 enhancements require post processor adjustments? Yeah, uh, good question. Um, so for mill turn posts, um, there will need to be some modifications if you are adding uh, probing cycles. Uh, but other than that, no. Awesome. Uh, next question I have is for Kirsten. We currently use CamWorks. If we are using the 3D platform and uploading our SOLIDWORKS parts to the cloud, what happens to our CamWorks data? Uh, your CamWorks data stays intact, um, so that that data is always going to exist with your SolidWorks part, whether you upload it to the cloud or not. Um, and once you bring that part file back into SolidWorks and you turn on your CamWorks add-in, you're going to have full access to all of your tool paths and programming information. Uh, so no need to worry on that front. Awesome. And a uh, last question here for Felicia, is the new continuous B access feature available with all turning packages? Uh, 
So because CAMWORKs uh, continual B access requires uh, the uh, synchronization machining, that is found in CAMWORKs Turning Pro package. Awesome. So again, uh, thank you for everyone. That is all the time we have for today. Um, if you do have any questions on the content we covered here today, you can reach out to your account manager or our technical support team. We are definitely here to support you. And once again, thank you to our presenters and thank you very much for joining us for this session in our Enabling Canadian Innovation Series. Uh, we hope to see you again at some of our other sessions and don't forget to keep an eye out for the survey that will be coming after we wrap up this week for a chance to win even more prizes. So again, thank you so much and have a great rest of your day. Bye. Thanks everyone. Thanks everybody.